Hey guys, I'm Malcolm. If you're new to my channel, thanks for stopping by. If you're returning, I appreciate you stopping back by to see what's new. So today I wanna to tell you about my experience buying the MacBook Pro 14 inch and whether or not it was worth buying and spending $2,000 on or if I should have bought a $2,000 fully loaded MacBook Air. And what's the difference you get between those two laptops when you do that? The MacBook Air in all its own right at a base configuration can handle every bit of my workload and I'm very pleased with it. The MacBook Pro 14, while it's a fantastic computer and I really, really like it and I'm happy with my decision, I have one huge drawback and that is that I have to plug in an SSD like this. Now this is a one terabyte SSD and by having to plug it in constantly to do my work for my day to day, it's, it's kind of annoying. And I'm, I kind of wish I had maybe invested in more hard drive space. Being that this is already top of the line laptop for me and for the money I'm spending, I'm wondering if it wasn't been better spent on an Air fully loaded with bigger hard drive space for my convenience. And that's what I want to get into today. So let's build a fully spec MacBook Air and I'll go through that and show you what, it, what you get when you do that versus the MacBook Pro 14 in its base configuration. All right, so here we are on Apple's website. Let's go to Mac. Let's select the MacBook Air. Let's select buy. Now we're going to build this out in the best configuration you can. So we're gonna select the Apple M1 chip with the eight core CPU, eight core GPU, and 512 gigabytes of storage as the base. We're gonna select base gray. And that starts at $1249. Now the current base model is $1,000, $999. Let's go ahead and hit select. We get on the base configuration for $1249, you get eight gigs of RAM, a 512 hard drive, the retina display, a backlit keyboard, which is very, very nice, and two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports. So first order of business, let's upgrade the RAM to 16 gigabytes. It's gonna be an add of $200, bringing our total to $1449. And we're going to go ahead and spend another $600 to upgrade the two terabyte SSD. So that brings our total that you can spec this computer out to, to $2,049. Now you could reduce it to just the one terabyte drive and have money left over to add Final Cut Pro and you're at $1,948. That is another option. So you're not only getting a <clears throat> Apple's own dedicated software suite for video editing, but you're getting the one terabyte hard drive internal and 16 gigs of RAM. Now that should be more than enough. And because it's Apple's dedicated software, it's gonna run the most optimized on the M1 Air. So that's one option, but let's go ahead and just reduce that. And let's go ahead and look back at our, our Max one. Cause I personally like to edit with DaVinci Resolve. I have never tried Final Cut. It's on the shopping list, just not right now. With that, we're at $2,049. Now, if that's for a fully specced MacBook Air in space gray. Let's go up and just take a quick look at the MacBook Pro 14 inch. We're gonna select the 14. I'm not gonna consider the 13 right now just because it hasn't come out yet. And I know that there's a new one on the way, but the old one is just a little dated still. So let's just leave it out of the equation. So let's go buy. We're gonna buy the 14 inch. Space gray, of course, only way to be. We're gonna have the eight core CPU M1 Pro with a 14 core GPU, 10 gigabytes of RAM, and a 512 gigabytes SSD storage drive. Now that starts at $2,000. Basically, we're not gonna add anything to it. As you can see, you can spec out the MacBook Pro 14 as much as you want, and it's probably worth it to an extent. But let's just leave it in this base configuration because that's what I am currently have right here in front of me and it's got a 67 watt power adapter. The question I have, is it worth buying MacBook Air over the MacBook Pro 14? Now let's talk about some of the body features in these laptops. I, one thing I'm gonna say right now is this Air is incredibly small. It's incredibly easy to handle. You can see how thin it is. I mean, very, very thin laptop versus the MacBook Pro 14. So as you can see here, there's a heck of a difference in the size of these two laptops as far as how thick they are. Now that's really the only really major difference. The footprint on these laptops is almost the same. I mean, there, there's not much difference in actual physical size there. The screen's just barely bigger and that, that bigger screen comes in the form of the bezel. Like the, the air doesn't show the full ridge like the 14 uh, or the 14 inch doesn't show the full 
screen bezel. It, it uses more of the bezel space, which is a very smart move to keep the screen size bigger and give you more resolution while retaining the size of the laptop into a smaller device. Really, it's gonna come down to what's convenient for you and what's gonna be best. Personally, I like having the Pro, but is it just the hype that I like? Do I like just owning, I've got a MacBook Pro for like everybody else out there? That could be part of it for me. I, I, I'm not gonna deny that, that I do like having nice stuff. There's a lot of convenience in the Pro 14 that the Air doesn't give you. The SD card slot, the HDMI output, Literally, I have the 65 inch right here in front of me that I plug my HDMI cord into, and I've got a dual monitor set up to edit off of. I've got my timeline up here and all my, my sub clips and, and media, device, uh, media files down below, easy drag and drop system. So that portion of it, I really do enjoy having the MacBook Pro. But for the convenience of having extra hard drive space, Everything I do, I keep on this SSD. I keep all my storage files, I keep my music on here, I keep everything on here. And that's because I don't wanna burn up the 512 gigabyte hard drive in here. Not that I'm gonna ruin it, I just don't want it full of crap. I don't want it full of all the everyday stuff that the SSD can hold, like the music and the video files and all that. For the most part, 512 gigabytes has worked just fine for me because it allows me to have this to edit off of and I can edit safely off of it. But if I'm gonna be traveling, which I plan on leaving, which I'm leaving uh, very soon to go on a, a longer trip for a job, I'm going to say that, you know, I'm always gonna to have to have this plugged into it and it makes it a little bit cumbersome. I have to un, I have to eject it, unplug it, store it away in the bag. And then when I get the laptop back out, I gotta pull all that stuff back out. Where I almost think it would be worth just having the air alone with two terabytes inside, open it up and start working. And I think that's where I would really enjoy having the more hard drive space over the benefits and the features of the 14 Pro. Now the air is completely sealed. It has no vents in it, not designed to have air passing through it. Now while the inside of these laptops when you see them taken apart are really clean and beautiful, this 14 inch has vents on it. And you've got one right there, You've got one all the way across the back, and you've got the other one right here. These are the vents that allow this laptop to circulate. Now pushing this laptop, it's gotten very warm, but I've never heard a fan in it. I've never heard it kick on or start blowing air. I think a lot of it's just passive heat just allowing air to move. Let's consider that. If you're traveling, if you're hiking, if you're on a motorcycle, or you just wanting to keep it as light as possible, this laptop is more than capable 95% of the time for most people. I think for myself included, I feel that maybe my money would have been better spent on this for my convenience than having to always carry my dongle and my SSD for the 512. Ultimately, if I had more money to spend and more budget, I would buy an M1 Pro still with a bigger hard drive, preferably at least the four terabyte. But it's just hard to justify when you don't have the income to back it where you don't have the budget in your own finances to be able to afford something like that. And SSDs, it's hard not to pass this up for $100 when they wanna charge you $200 for the same, same drive, essentially, with an internal. I mean, ultimately, that comes down to my convenience. I would have much rather had the option, if I had the option to buy this with a two terabyte hard drive, I would have done it. I would have spent the extra money to get it. But because I had to buy it at Best Buy for Total Tech, and I had to only have this one or the one terabyte model with the bigger processor in it, it was hard to justify the bigger processor in that for this. Should I have bought a loaded MacBook Air? Well, maybe. I mean, I really could have been very happy with this computer and having this. Now the SD card slot, I use constantly on this. Having always recorded my files, I put them right into the SD reader. I copy them onto the SSD to work off of or onto the hard drive, depending on which project I'm doing. Having to always have my little dongle plugged into this to be able to copy the files would be a hassle, but it would be as much hassle as just always having to have this all the time while I'm editing. No, I could copy the files, plug it away, put it away, and then just have the hard drive inside to work off of. Now, I, I like that option better. Now the SSD does give you a little bit of security as it's a secondary area for your stuff to be and be working off of. If the laptop should fail, at least your footage is backed up here and not lost 
in the memories of this. Is it right for you? That's my thoughts on it. I don't know if uh, only you can answer really what's gonna be best for you in that case. So in conclusion, guys, if your budget is $2,000, and you're looking at the Pro, don't let the hype of the Pro and the M1 Pro processor outweigh your decision on buying a really good Air that is phenomenal with RAM and a bigger hard drive. This is probably the better buy overall. I, that's just my opinion on it and take it as you will, but that's what I think. So with that being said, guys, Appreciate you watching to the end. If you like this video, hit that like button for me. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe down below. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video and more content's on the way as I am hitting the road here really soon. Again, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one. Talk to you later.